I messed up. So the first blob that we have is Park Test Prep. So basically what we did in here is we basically showed what we did uh, during uh, the park test. Um, but it wasn't actually the real park test, it was the prep. And here you can see all my answers and what I put in. There's an option to not put it in and say I didn't want to share my scores, or to put it in and share my scores. I wanted to put it in and share my scores. So we went outside and we got like a battery and the next blog. Here is my favorite book so far this year. Over here we basically went on to this website uh, called Template. I'm pretty sure that's what it's like called, the but we basically uh, went through this website and we made like sort of a like a book review about it, but we put like this basically like the summary in it, and here's a picture of the book, and then you can pause the video if you want just to read this. So. Here we have modeling Earth's rotation and revolution. Uh, over here. We basically explain um, why the Earth is cold on one side and it's hot on the other, and why the sun appears to uh, get into different places throughout the year. Like in the winter, it's a bit lower and stuff like that. Um, here I have some questions. Why is it important to use models when it when explaining or teaching things? I said it might help people how to understand the size or what it looks like or feels like if you can, you know, sort of replicate that. Uh, what are some limitations of models? What makes them perfect? They're never perfect because there are always things that do not exist. Say, like, say you were like modeling with your friend's head and you never. Never, like you've never um, discovered like a, a pimple on his head and you make it and he doesn't and you don't pimple on his model you're, that's something that you haven't discovered like on the earth we don't know what's under the ocean sea so it's never going to be like a perfect model over here we have models of the sun and shadows so over here, basically what we did is me and my partner, Shingun, uh, basically explained uh, shadows and how they work. And um, I, we had some notes. Shadows are longer during the end of the day and the beginning of the day. Clouds could affect the way a shadow looks. A shadow happens when the sun rays are blocked by an object. Shadows in the winter are longer because of the angle of the sun. Like I said just a few minutes ago, um, it gets lower, so it's more at, like a line. So say, say if I had my water bottle here and the sun was pointing right here, it'd be a longer shadow because it's not like this, pointing down, and it's like this. So it's gonna go straight out. So over here we have Dio de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Um, I wasn't here for it, but I posted some facts about it. So if you want to pause the video, maybe you can probably do that. So here we have observing the sun for a day. Explain that the sun appears to travel an arc across the sky every day using models and a clear explanation. Explain that the apparent motion of the sun is actually caused with Earth's rotation on its axis. Explain why the position of the sun arc varies throughout the year. So this is. Uh, I basically just embedded all those questions into my video, and I say them in my video, and it basically explains all those questions like why the position of the sun arc varies throughout the year, uh, the axis sort of you know, it like the axis sort of moves it you know, 365 days a year it turns, so it's gonna have like a different you know, variation of a of a type of spin. So. Here we have tracking shadows during a day. Tracking shadows during a day is we went outside and um, we sort of just, it's hard to explain, but we sort of went outside and we took a battery and we put it on a piece of paper and we tracked its shadow throughout the day and we would see uh, what had the longest time. And as you can see, the morning had the longest time. Uh, and that surprised me because I felt like, you know, like around 1 o'clock, like right here, could have had like the possibly like longest time, but it, but it surprised me 
because like 12 o'clock and 10 30 a.m. we're very very short so and then here we have some questions that I answered um, it basically explains like what patterns did you notice about the shadow length during the day and stuff like that here's a picture picture of my paper and what it looked like as you can see this is the longest shadow this is I think 9:25, and then 2:15. So 11:25 and 2:15, and then this was like 10 and 12. Uh, 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Well, 12 a.m. slash p.m. Never mind. Okay, so here we have environmental challenge. Environmental challenge was basically a challenge where we had to make up this sort of object that would help the earth with some type of uh, thing that, here, I'll just read this. What the environmental challenge was, was a big period of the day of us making a prototype that could help the earth with pollution. Well, for me, air pollution is a very serious matter. That is going on right now, and that's why I came up with the air pollution no more. I built, I built was, what I built was an air pollution no more machine. And what it did was suck bad air into the machine and keep it in like this sort of container. Then you could empty it out into a bag it came with. So it, the bag was sort of like a vacuum, and it would suck all the bad air in. It would filter it, and then it would come back out later as good air. Um. The reason I chose this is because today there's too, there's too much air pollution, which can also lead to lung cancer, which can lead to a stroke or death. Here is a picture of what it was. As you can see, right here is where the air would come in. It's stored in this container, and if you had like any dirt on the ground, it would already pick it up. Uh, here are the wheels. Um, it would come in, store in here, and then there was a little hole right there, and I had like a piece of tape pulled down, so I lifted up like this little hatch, sort of like a water bottle. Like I sort of just took it off like this. And then I could take the air out. Well, I could put it into the bag, of course. Here we have day and night. I was sick for this day, so I, I sort of don't have the blog. But I needed a responsibility partner for it, and it was a two-day lesson, so... Yeah. And so, like, basically, we had, like, different challenges with catching the ruler. So, like, one time we would have to close our eyes, and another time we would have to, um, It's taking a bit to load. You know, we would have to, like, not, you know, like, catch all the eyes. What is going on? And then, what was the other one? Okay, there we go. Sense of touch, sense of sight. Oh, Sorry, it's really slow. I have a lot of tabs open. I'm gonna do this last page. I'm pretty sure that's about 20. So. Okay. So right here we have revolutionary tug of war. In it, we basically what we basically did is we had the British and the Americans, and there was this rope. So basically, what the rope was basically the rule. So there is a disadvantage for the British since they are the bigger kids and the smaller kids, aka me and some other kids. Uh, were on the other side, and then it, there was these like neutral. They were the white side, not the blue, not the red. They were the white side. They would make up with the rules. They were basically the Congress. So basically, what we would do is we'd had the British and the Amer and the Americans. So basically, the British had a disadvantage that during the first no, that was for us. So we had a disadvantage that the first uh five seconds, we could only use our left hand, and everybody was right-handed on my team, so that worked out, <sighs> yeah, and then we got a bigger advantage, um, we only have to move it just like, we only have to move it just like an inch, but the other team has to move it like three feet, and as you can tell, we won, since after five seconds, we just used all our might and just pulled it back, so that worked out well. <coughs> Over here we have Earth's gravitational force. 
So basically what it was is we basically made a blog post and it had some questions and you watched videos explaining, you know, what goes on and why it happens. And here's some, like, answers to those questions. And then down here, as you can see, I have how Earth's gravitational force works. That's basically just a video, but it's more like detailed into what the answers are. Here we have modeling Earth shape. Uh, basically what we did is we took the Earth and we modeled it because, as you all may know, uh, it's not perfect. It isn't like a perfect round circle, sphere, I should say. If it was a circle, it'd be flat, but, you know. So, over here, we were uh, asked to write down some notes from our own research and some notes from videos. As you can tell, we got a bit more research from videos because we didn't get that lot of time. We didn't have, like, a lot of time for research, but we had a lot of time for videos because, as you all may know, uh, videos are longer than, you know, actually doing research. They actually take, like, time. In this video, it basically explains, like, you know, why it's sort of like the shape and why it's, you know, formed like this. And here are some reflection questions that I answered. Here's my HBRP. So, right here, it's basically just a link to my HBRP, uh, sharing, you know, what's inside of it, and, you know, what's, like, what I've done over the past 12 weeks, uh, working on it, so... Here I have, <laughs> this is weird, here I have my other student-led conference. So, uh, me and my dad, my, well, I was explaining it to him, but he was in the background, and he was uh, basically listening to it, and I showed him what my student-led conference was for the first semester. Here is how our muscles are going off. So basically what this was is we, uh, it was during science, and it was basically like electric shocks coming down. Down. And here is blink reflex, um, stuff like that. And we would have this, like this clear piece of plastic, sort of like this. And we would hold it in front of our face with, uh, like a paper ball, and throw it at the piece of paper and see how our body reacted. Of course, all of us flinched because we thought it was gonna come towards us, and our body saying, "Move, get out of there, you're gonna get hurt." So. Here's a picture of what it looked like, as you can see that clear piece of glass, and that little white line, you can sort of see it, but that was the ball and he was throwing it, I think that's it right there, actually, it didn't hit my head, so that's good. Uh, here are some questions, and answer these questions in your blog entry, uh, it was basically just some reflection questions and what we did in it. Here we have writing a scene for June Bugs. In this blog, we basically watched two scenes from the movie Ice Age. Uh, it, one of the things that we did was important decision. The, so one of the decisions was it, during the watermelon scene. Sid had to either, like, you know, he had to sacrifice himself or he could just give back the melon at the end. And he decided to just run through them, sort of like a quarterback. But in the end, he, deci he decides to throw it to the ground and he smashes the watermelon. Over here is a clip, is another clip, and uh, during this clip, they have the baby and they go down that ice slide, and they're making important decisions and. Uh, and they're making informed decisions of what to do with the baby and, you know, how to get it back to safety. Over here we have how, the mu how our muscles get the nutrients they need. So basically what we did is we took all of our, we took like this cup and like we put like some spices in it with like jello and the other one was just normal jello and we would see how they would get the nutrients through like a, you know, a coffee, uh, like dispenser thing and it, all the stuff like blew out and the one with the barbecue sauce type seasoning, uh, sort of just fell out and into the cup so uh, the other one that was just like, you know, pure liquid jello didn't make it through.
examples of first person, second person, and third person. So now I'm going to go back. And Here's a picture back. picture of what they look like. This was the normal Jello one, and this one was the one with seasoning. And I'm probably because I think I have a lot of information kind of after this one. Over here we have hashtag World Kindness Day. One way to celebrate World Kindness Day is to do a freeze mob. What you do is you do some kind of act of kindness, then you freeze in the middle of doing it. Here's an example. And so I like this one a lot. And as you can see, there's a bunch of people dancing, and they're basically just, you know, sort of dancing to like the rhythm of a happy song. Um, because I felt like I did the and that was my 24th 